All right, let's be honest for a sec. Is there anything, and I mean anything more satisfying than finally finishing that DIY project you've been working on? Oh, I totally get it. That feeling of, I did that. It's like the best reward, you know? Totally. It's like level unlocked on being an adult. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you save some cash, learn some new stuff, and you get to admire your work. Mm. So satisfying. Exactly. But, and you know, we always got to look at every angle here. There are a ton more people DIYing than ever ever before and there are some hidden downsides especially when it comes to you guessed it insurance yeah you're totally right i love diy as much as the next person but there are some risks that people don't always think about things that could really come back to bite you when it comes to your homeowner's insurance bingo and nobody wants a diy project turning into a money pit right definitely not <laughs> that's why today we're going deep on this blog post and the title is intense DIY disasters that could cripple your coverage. Wow. Okay. That definitely grabs your attention. No kidding. Right. But you know what I find interesting? That word, cripple. Like, it makes you think this isn't just about a little inconvenience. Mm -hmm. We're talking about some serious potential consequences here. Oh, for sure. And the article does not mess around. They hit you with the hard facts right away. Get this. Electrical fires cause more than 50,000 injuries every year. Oh, wow. And over a billion, that's a billion with a B, dollars in property damage every year. That's insane. And it gets even crazier. Water damage. Over $10 billion in insurance claims every single year. Oh, water damage is the worst. The worst. And don't even get me started on roofs. Those are another $5 billion in claims annually. Okay, so we've got these crazy statistics, right? But here's where it gets really real. The article makes this point that a lot, and I mean a lot of these insurance claims, they're from DIY projects gone wrong. And we're not talking about like building an addition on your house. We're talking everyday stuff people try to fix themselves. Mm, yep. It's so easy to see how it happens though. Think about it. We're surrounded by these DIY shows, tutorials online. They make everything look so easy. And yeah, you might feel empowered to rewire your entire kitchen after watching a five minute YouTube video, even if you've never changed a light bulb before. It's like the DIY version of thinking you're an expert after reading one article online. Oh, totally. It's scary how relatable that is. Okay, but let's get into the nitty gritty here. The blog post specifically calls out three DIY danger zones, the ones that cause the biggest headaches for insurance companies. Are you ready for it? Hit me with it. Electrical work, plumbing repairs, and roofing. Yeah, those are the big ones. And you know what they all have in common? They seem so simple on the surface. Right. We flip a light switch a million times a day. Yeah. How hard can it be to rewire a whole room right? The famous last words. Seriously. Okay, let's break these down one by one, starting with electrical work. Why is it that just the thought of DIY electrical work makes insurance agents break into a cold sweat? Well, the main thing is you're dealing with stuff you can't even see. Like with plumbing, you can at least see the water leaking. But with electrical, you make one wrong move and boom, you're talking about a fire getting a nasty shock, even explosions sometimes. Okay, yeah, I'll leave explosions to the professionals. <laughs> but what if it's something small, like adding a new outlet? The article mentioned using the wrong gauge wiring. What's the deal with that? So it all comes down to how much power can flow through something. Hmm. It's like, imagine trying to put out a huge fire with one of those tiny water bottles. Not going to work, right? Definitely not. Same with electrical wiring. If you use a wire that's too small, that's the gauge for the amount of electricity trying to go through it, it heats up way too much, it could start a fire. Mm -hmm. And those DIY shows, they almost never tell you how to figure out what size wire you need for different things. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I ignore a leaky faucet or two, but after all this talk about electrical fires, I kind of want to know what kind of plumbing nightmares we're talking about here. What's like the worst case scenario with DIY plumbing? The thing with plumbing is it's sneaky. It's not always a big dramatic thing. It's more like slow and steady damage that you might not even notice for months, maybe even years. Yikes. Remember those stats we talked about with water damage? A lot of those come from small leaks that are doing damage behind the scenes. Oh, no. So, like, what's an example? What seems like a small plumbing problem that could turn into a disaster if I try to fix it myself? Let's say you're switching out a faucet, right? And you accidentally strip a pipe. It happens. You turn the water back on, think everything's fine, maybe give yourself a little high five. But you don't realize there's this teeny tiny leak hidden behind the wall. And that leak, over time, it's slowly rotting the wood, creating the perfect environment for mold. Mm. By the time you see the damage, you're talking about thousands of dollars in repairs. Ugh, that's awful. 
It reminds me of that study we talked about, about how people don't realize how much home repairs can cost in the long run. It's a perfect example. It's not just about fixing it right now. It's about understanding the consequences down the road. And speaking of long-term consequences, let's talk about roofs. That oh. just seems like a whole other level of DIY danger, right? Oh, definitely. With roofs, you've got two major things to worry about. Your own safety and then the possibility of messing up your house. Yeah, I get nervous even thinking about getting up on a roof. And for good reason. Falls are a huge problem. And even if you somehow manage not to fall off the roof, there's still the issue of properly installing the shingles. Right. If your roof leaks, it can cause all sorts of other problems like damaged insulation, even structural issues with your house. It's a dominant effect. It's like that saying, for want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. Yeah. Except in this case, it's like, for want of a properly installed shingle, the entire roof caved in. Exactly. <laughs> and that's not even an exaggeration. This is why when it comes to roofing, hiring someone who knows what they're doing isn't just about convenience, it's about making sure your house is safe. Okay, so we've talked about all the things that could go wrong, right? The fires, the leaks, the roof disasters. But let's talk about the insurance side of things. When this blog post says DIY can void your coverage, what does that actually mean? That's the big question, right? And it's where things get a little tricky. See, at its core, insurance is all about managing risk. When you decide to do a risky DIY project and you don't really have the skills or experience, well, you're making it more likely that something's going to go wrong. Hmm. And that means you might have to file a claim. So it's not like they have this rule where if you even touch a wrench, your insurance is gone. Not exactly. It's more about the details of the claim, the how and the why. If something gets damaged because of a DIY repair that, let's be honest, was way over your head and you didn't do things the right way, the insurance company might not pay for the damage. Okay, let's imagine this. Say I decide, this is totally hypothetical, of course, to rewire my whole basement myself, ignoring all the advice and warnings we just talked about. And then, surprise, surprise, I cause an electrical fire. Are you saying my insurance might not cover it? There's a good chance they wouldn't, especially if it's obvious that the fire started because the wiring wasn't up to code. And even if they do pay for some of the damage, your insurance payments could go up. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like they're saying, look, we'll help you out this time, but we're kind of on to you now, so things are going to be different. Exactly. They have to look at you as a bigger risk now. And in some cases, if you keep having these DIY disasters and needing to make claims, they might not even renew your policy. Okay, good to know. So for our listeners out there who love a good DIY project but also don't want to burn their house down, what are the biggest things to remember? It's all about knowing your limits. DIY can be awesome, but you got to be realistic. Small projects, cosmetic stuff, go for it. But if it involves electrical, plumbing, anything structural stuff that could be dangerous or complicated, just call a professional. It's worth it. It's like that saying, measure twice, cut once. Or in this case, think about your skills honestly, then call the plumber. Exactly. And you know what? Talk to your insurance company before you start anything big. Tell them your plan and ask if there are any special rules or permits you need. They can tell you what's covered and what's not, save you a lot of stress later. And keep good records, right? Oh, absolutely. Photos, receipts, permits, anything that shows you did the work right and it's all up to code. It could be a lifesaver if you ever need to make a claim. Think of it like your DIY insurance policy. You know, this whole conversation, it made me think about something. The article is about insurance, right? But the comment section got pretty deep. One commenter, George, he compared DIY risks to that recent thing with the Frontier flight catching fire after landing in Vegas. Remember that? Oh, yeah. George's comment, he talked about how we just kind of trust some systems without thinking like flying. We don't ask about every part of the plane before we get on, do we? We just trust that someone checked it and it's safe. Right. And Amara, she talked about Paul Lowe, that hiker who died recently. It really got me thinking a lot of times we do these things, hiking, traveling, even big DIY projects without really getting how dangerous they could be. It's true. I think that's a big takeaway here. You know, whether you're fixing something in your house or getting on a plane or going for a hike, it's important to be a little cautious a little aware. It's not about being scared. It's just about making good decisions and understanding that our choices have consequences. It's like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but maybe it's more like an ounce of thinking ahead can save you from a ton of insurance claims and potential disasters. I like that. It's about finding that balance, enjoying life, but also being ready for anything. Well said. Well, on that note, I think it's time for us to wrap things up. 
Huge thanks to everyone for listening today. And remember, that feeling of finishing a DIY project, it's amazing. But it's not worth risking your safety, your peace of mind, or your bank account. Couldn't have said it better myself. Do your research, know what you're capable of, and when in doubt, call the professionals. And we'll see you all next time. Until then, stay curious, stay informed, and most importantly, stay safe out there, DIYers.